So this station is IP, uh, IEU and IPS, synergies, collaborations, and shared goals. So presented, uh, presenters are uh, Urban Erickson, Alicia Maketi, and Susan Rabona. So um, please show. Yeah, okay. So, hi, hi, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Karua. Um, so I'm gonna chair this session. So I'm gonna share my screen. So you will see our presentation. And um, can you can you see my slides now? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. There, there might be a, a slight delay because my connection is not great. So I apologize about that. But I couldn't find a better one. <laughs> so okay. so. <laughs> okay, so today, um, yeah, we're gonna explore this uh, recent, um, you know, um, MOU that has been signed between the IAU and the IPS. IAU stands for International Astronomical Union, as possibly most of you know. And um, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of that MOU, and uh, but most importantly, I'm gonna talk about what the IAU is and uh, how we could actually um, enrich this MOU and possibly expand to not only the communication side of astronomy, but also to the scientific and education and development side that the IEU represent. So I'll give an introduction and then I will leave the, the floor to Urban, who is going to talk about the education side of this collaboration. And then Susan, again, that will explore a little bit about the one of the projects that the Astronomy for Development Office has funded, which is the telescope project that you already heard about. And, and we will do some closing remarks. So as I said, this is the context and the bright future, I would say. So in 2019, uh, the IPS signed this memorandum of understanding with the, uh, the IU, but only within uh, what is the IU Commission C2, which is the Communicating Astronomy with the Public um, Commission. Uh, now, the IEU has a very complicated structure. I'm going to go through that in a moment. But the idea is that if this MOU could be expanded through other commissions and division within the IEU, I think that it, it will benefit both world and, and the discussion would bring more projects uh, along the way. So what is the IEU? Well, the, it's a worldwide union of professional astronomers. So it started in 1999, 1919, sorry and uh, has uh, um, 14,000 members plus every year. We are kind of you know, getting new members as soon as we have new graduates in astronomy. And uh, we have 82 member countries and 177 uh, nationalities. And uh, the idea is to promote and safeguard astronomy in all of its aspects, including research, of course, but also communication, education, and development. And um, uh, the IU structure has, uh, is divided into different offices. So you see the core is, of course, the knowledge advancement of astronomy as professional astronomers. But then there are all these four uh, different offices. One which is, has been just established, the OAE for education. But uh, the other one are uh, the Astronomy for uh, Communication Office, which is based in Tokyo. And then we have the training advancements for young astronomer and then the development office in Cape Town. So we will see today a little bit of the education talking uh, fr from urban and then the Susan talk about the development side and I will cover the rest. So what does the IEU do? Well, it does a lot of things and I couldn't go through all of these in my talk. So I suggest that if you want to know more, you just go and, and look to this uh, IU strategic plan for the next 10 years, and um, which is posted at the IU website. There are a lot of different angles that could be explored. Uh, one, of course, is okay to pitch ideas of more collaboration in, these, in our gatherings. So the IU brings together people worldwide. We have a nine scientific symposium a year sponsored by the IAU and one regional meeting uh, per year. And, um, and every three years we have what we call the General Assembly, which is of course the biggest one in a sense because it brings together the whole of the community. And um, in this occasion, there are focus meetings in which we could actually pitch in the idea of bringing 
the planetarium um, as a new research facilities or other as a new education facility that could um, uh, you know, talk more with the astronomy based community. And the next one is gonna be in Korea in August, 2021, hopefully with no trouble, even though we are all fingers crossed. And the other one is gonna be in 2024 in South Africa. Now, if you want to engage with the IU, you need to engage for the GA, you need to engage very early because the preparation is very long. So I've started already to discuss the idea of pitching ideas for the Korea one of these two uh, foster collaboration with the IPS, but we need to go forward. So, um, as the IU has um, uh, different executive uh, working groups, which are more like a higher level, which are tackling these uh, five teams, okay, so women in astronomy, junior members, diversity and inclusiveness, dark and white skies, and global coordination of last facilities. So all of these are like a, a broader um, uh, working group that work across the whole community. Uh, and of course, we have different projects tackling different aspects for both education and, and development. And uh, one thing that I think has a lot of synergies with the IPS is the importance of inclusivity and empowers women and diversity. So the IU has, uh, uh, is very fond of this idea and is developing different projects that are actually reaching a lot um, uh, of people worldwide uh, through the network of the IAU. So this is the complicated structure I was talking about. So we have um, different divisions that are tackling different aspects of the community. And each division has different working group and commission, let's, let's talk using the jargon, uh, that works within the umbrella of a division. And actually, um, my suggestion is that if we want to foster a little bit more the connection between the IAU and the IPS, we need to actually engage with each different division, starting engaging with the president actually and the general secretary, a secretary but also going to each division and ask, you know, and, and engage in a dialogue and see which of the aspects of the planetarium uh, could benefit the research that is tackled in this specific division and possibly sign a, a different IMOU with the entire IAU. And uh, I mean, I know that in this community it sounds very uh, weird, but actually most of professional astronomers don't think about planetarium as a possible revenue for research and other aspects than communication. So there is a dialogue that needs to go, uh, to go and, you know, and being fostered. Um. Oops. Okay. And why is that? Well, for research, for sure, uh, we will see um, the need of planetarium to show big data set. Uh, we have heard about Sally talking about idea, uh, visualization lab, and, and Tom actually will talk a little bit more about this. Actually, if you use the dome to promote research, research in, the, in the dome, uh, I mean, it's, it's actually a, a fantastic tool. To, to look to the data, to the 3D data that are, you know, astronomical data, all of them are 3D, um, they, they actually um, would benefit of, of an, a, a more extensive use of the dome itself. And, uh, and yeah, Tom will talk a little bit more about this and our effort in Cape Town. And as, as for the communication side, we have a network of 100 countries. So we have an established network that we, it can be used. And uh, we use, of course, astronomy to inspire curiosity into you know, the wider, uh, the, the youngest and to, to encourage them to study STEM uh, subjects as well. And uh, there has been a celebration of 100 years uh, these, uh, these, uh, this year, actually, uh, of the IAU. And there has been 5,000 activities in 143 countries uh, directly involving 5 to 10 million people. So it's actually a large scale um, effort. And again, there is a very nice final report that you can look to because I, I can possibly go through all the different aspects of, of, these, uh, um, of these activities. Um, as part of the MOU that we signed, um, the, the IPS representative will have an opportunity to present their goal in, in the context of communicating and sharing with the public using the dome into what is actually the largest conference for communicating and sharing with the public community, 
The last one was in 2018, and it had 450 participants from basically all continents, apart from Antarctica. And, um, and there, there was supposed to be one this year in 2020, but of course, COVID-19 has you know, blocked that. So there is a plan to go to do a virtual cup in 2021. Um, suggested period is February 2021. We will you know, stay tuned because there will be news about that. And then possibly in 2022, we think to have another in person again, hopefully in Sydney where the 2020 was supposed to happen. And uh, that is supposed to be in September, 2022. So in this occasion, IPS rep will have uh, as I have in now the opportunity to present the IU uh, on the other side, presenting the IPS. Okay, and now uh, let's move on to Urban's talk that will tackle the education aspect of the IU and education research. So Urban, you can take over. Thank you, Lucia. All right, my name is Urban Eriksson. I'm a chair for the Working Group for Astronomy, Education, Research and Method within the IAU. And um, um, as such, uh, I'm going to address education and education research and how it could, could be possible to collaborate with the IPS. So if we read first from uh, the objectives from Division C within the IAU, it says that education ranges from primary to tertiary level, including both formal and informal education, and is informed by astronomy education research. So we see that what we should do is address both sides here, both education and research in education. And within Commission C1, where I work, uh, the Commission uh, seeks to further the development and improvement of astron astronomical education at all levels throughout the world through various projects developed and maintained by the Commission and by disseminating information concerning astronomy education. So again, we see this connection between education and what is done and how we can understand the learning aspect. So next slide, please. Okay, there you go. So therefore there are two sides to this coin. One is astronomy education and one is astronomy education research. And the new office of astronomy uh, for education is, is more or less responsible for the education aspect of this. And the working group for astronomy education research and methods are focusing on the research aspect of learning astronomy. So why not collaborate? And this is exactly what we are doing right now. The uh, Office for Astronomy for Education is, is quite new, if we take the next slide. Uh, so what we are now building is a collaboration between our groups here, actually. So the Office for uh, Astronomy for Education was seeing first light, the 1st of January to th in, in 2020 now, and it should serve um, astronomy education community worldwide by creating resources, infrastructure and training, etc. for us, but also curating, translating and disseminating good resources so that we can share this across the world. They're also building in a, a national, a network of national astronomy education coordinators and also centers and nodes around the world. It's supposed to be uh, built over the coming years here now. And they are arranging also annual workshops and also school for astronomy education. So this is, this is kind of new and things are moving forward very fast. So keep up to date while Googling them or going to their website at astroforedu.org and you will see much, much more about what they are doing. Next slide, please. There we go, yeah. So the Working Group for Astronomy uh, Education and Methods uh, here, the objectives for us are that we are facing a growing um, uh, amount of interesting things happening all over the world. But these all require adequate research into learning processes, educational tools and models, uh, quality and impact evaluation. So by looking at all of that, we realize that we need to have some kind of aims here for the working group. And it is to develop a strategy 
for enhancing astronomy education research by promoting reviews of scholarly productions. Much has been done all over the world, but it's really hard actually to do proper uh, reviews. So we are asking for help here. And I'm stretching my hand to you as well to help us in this process because quite a lot of astronomy education research is done in different languages. And it's really hard for me as a Swede, for instance, to read many different languages. So therefore, please help me, contact me. I'll give you my contacts later. Uh, but also then to promote, and dis, uh, promote discussions on how to inform teaching and learning astronomy based on astronomy education research. And also to actively encourage and nurture diversity uh, in astronomy education research and researchers. These are the aims for the working group. Next slide, please. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, we try to organize conferences and symposia in astronomy education research. And we promote in different regions and continents, survey literature reviews, summary of reviews, like I said, uh, of all the work done. But also we have just started a journal for publishing both scholarly work and work based on practice. We call this the Astronomy Education Journal. And next slide, please. You have the, the website, uh, the web address here. And I encourage you to actually submit papers there if you have something that you want to publish, because we hope to be a kind of new uh, journal for, for where you can spread your research and good practice. Next slide, please. Conferences, yeah, we organized the first Astro Ed conf uh, conference where we, with the title Bridging Research and Practice. And we did that last year and we had 114 participants from 25 countries uh, across all continents actually. And it was a very successful one. It was in Gashing in Munich at ESO headquarters. And uh, there is a report on that that you can find on, on, uh, on the web. Uh, the uh, ESO has published it in its messenger. So please go there, look at it. And uh, hopefully, next slide, it's going to be a second one. We are planning, or we were planning for one in 2021, but it has been canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Hopefully there will be one in 2022, but it's still to be determined. Sorry to say that. We are still crossing our fingers and hope. But it will be a conference sometime. <laughs> Next slide, please. So the, I, uh, the IAU, Office for Astronomy Education, and this working group for astronomy education research and methods versus the IPS, what can we do when it comes to teaching and learning in planetarium? Well, there are many educational efforts done in planetarium across the globe today. Much educational material are being developed by individuals and organizations. We know that some astronomy education is being done, but not too much. And there's a good summary by, by Tim Slater and Ted Jets from 2012, where you can read uh, about much of what's been done so far. So collaborations and coordinations would be beneficial for us all, actually. Next slide. So our two organizations could I think, collaborate to spread educational knowledge and know-how. We can share materials across platforms. We can collaborate to enhance the astronomy education research body to help inform the teaching and learning of astronomy using planetariums. So again, I stretch my hand to you. And if you want to make a difference, join us today. Contact me, contact the OAE. Uh, and also, I believe that there is the educational committee within the IPS that you can talk to if you are interested in these questions. So please join us today. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Urban. Okay, so you'll see the, the context of Urban here. And now we move on to the last aspect, which is the um, Astronomy for Development. So I'll give you an introduction of what, of what the, astronomy office, the Astronomy 
for development office is and the network so uh, the oad is uh, sitting in cape town but it's actually jointly operating with different regional offices around the globe that you see on this map here and uh, and is operating then in all different uh, you know um, countries and uh, the, the fact that uh, you know the IU is such a big organization and the OED is working towards development it, it actually mandates that we look to the EU development goals and we incorporate them into our you know the call for proposal when when uh, every year the OED puts out this call for proposal there, all, there is always the angle that we try to highlight that are now uh, highlighting here okay and um, one nice thing of the OED and, uh, is then uh, when a, a project is then uh, you know successfully developed uh, out of the funds that they obtain then they also um, collect all the feedback and information afterwards such as we have um, a database of uh, of uh, you know possible challenges that has been found in a different region in which an activity has been developed, educational material developed for, for that specific region that might not work in a different region. And there is this database that is available on the OAD website that you can use to search for materials. So if you also have a planetarium that uh, uh, you know, works in a very specific region, you might want to find and look for education material here. So as we said, every year they, they have a call for proposal and one of the call for proposal basically was won by Susan um, uh, and now Susan is going to tell us a little bit more about how she developed the project as a funded IU project. Okay, take it over. Thank you, thank you Lucia and Avan. Um, so uh, just to start in 2014, Chu and I met and we had an idea to start the Travelling Telescope. And it was our dream to take the telescope around, if you go to the next slide, please, and, and, and give it to as many kids and adults, because we knew that this tool had been around for more than 400 years, and yet most people hadn't had a chance to look through one. We also knew that this could spark an interest. But in addition to the telescope, we also had seen the power of the planetarium. So we had a dream and a, an idea, but we didn't have any funds. So we started looking for ways to raise funds to realize our dream. And we came across this call for proposal from the Office of Astronomy for Development under IAU and applied. Um, at that time, we were very ambitious. We wanted to go to 40 schools in a month and reach you know, thousands of kids. Uh, we won the proposal and we did go to about 40 schools in a month taking the planetarium and the telescope and everything. And we reached 30,000 children in this one area of the country. Now, through that grant we received from um, IAU through OAD, next slide, please. We were able to you know, create a huge buzz amongst uh, the community around. Um, uh, I really like this photo because this was before we had uh, access to funding. And we had already our dream and we're taking a really small telescope to schools. And these were more than a thousand kids waiting to look through that tiny telescope in a rural school. Sadly, it, it clouded over and we didn't do anything. But the first, we knew that there was a market for what we were doing. So moving forward, when we got the funding, we expanded to not just working with schools, but also taking our telescope to lodges and com connecting with communities. If you see in the slide below, you can see um, uh, these um, traditional Maasai uh, um, middle-aged man looking through the telescope with elephants right next there. And this is where the skies are really beautiful. Um, so we've engaged the youth, we've empowered girls, we are inspiring future pos possibilities, but this would not have happened without the uh, funding we received from IU. Next slide, please. So uh, because of the buzz and the excitement, um, we, we were able to be featured on international media. So one, at one point we had CNN on one phone and Al Jazeera on the other one and BBC all looking for stories from us. And if you want to check the stories uh, that you are featured on, you're welcome to visit our website. But what this publicity did for us, it created more opportunities with bigger um, organizations like Airbus Foundation, with United Nations, 
uh, where we took the planetarium and had support from Digitalis through Kyle. And uh, also the current IPS president, Max Brown, was able to join in um, in our meeting in, in Kenya with the United Nations. So that created uh, bigger contacts and great opportunities for us, obviously working with the youth as well and, and undergrad students in Kenya. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, from, from 2014, we've definitely moved forward. And I think you in the last session, you, sh you saw our creation of this bamboo dome and um, obviously improved our planetarium, a more portable one, which is a bigger one. We can squeeze in a hundred kids in a session sometimes because the parents and teachers lead. And we've also got our robotics program through Airbus amongst other projects we do. And that has really grown our project. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, and just to show you a few photos of the kind of joy and um, uh, inspiration and fun we've had in the last years um, uh, with the schools we've gone to, obviously with the planetarium. Uh, just again to say that we've received a lot of support in different ways from the International Planetarium Society community and even within the continent. So uh, this obviously created a whole lot of opportunities for us. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, it just taken a while, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, so our future is, you know, having a bamboo planetarium in Nairobi. Uh, there's no planetarium in the, in the city right now. And then we've also worked with um, uh, Airbus and other big companies to take them across the country. Um, and they also provide their expertise to schools. So they have kind of like a tourism option, but also then give their expertise to, to schools. So it's a social tourism. Our big project net right now is with Dr. Richard Leakey, who's, you know, world renowned archae um, uh, archeologist who's invited us to help him design a state of the art planetarium that we'll have in his new uh, iconic museum. And in return, he's going to donate land to us to build an outreach observatory. Like we would never have imagined with our dream of taking the telescope in our own, in our small van around Kenya that would reach this kind of opportunities. And also as a president and member of um, African Planetarium Association, we see that through OED, there's still opportunity to receive funding for planetarium and get uh, resources and, and as well as advice from the people in the IPS community and other experts on how to get more planetarium within the continent. So there's definitely a lot of connection between the planetarium world and um, IAU. This is just our last photo of very young, um, young um, Kenyan girls uh, who had visited our planetarium, uh, bamboo halfway peeping out and um, uh, had a whole session of science with us. Uh, I think that's it. The last slide is just details if you want to get in touch with us. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Susan. So this was our last uh, session. I'm just wrapping up because I'm cautious of time. So I'm already a minute ahead. So I hope I gave you a flavor of what the IAU does and how, you know, rich is the community that is behind this of the IAU. I think there is a lot of potential that could be explored between a, a more, you know, elaborated collaboration between the IAU and the IPS in all the different aspects that the IAU and the IPS is tackling, both the scientific area uh, and the education and the development. So I hope you com I convince you and please uh, reach us and reach me. I'm part of the Commission C2 and I'm in charge of li liaising, let's say, between the IPS and the IAU. So if you have any ideas on how we can improve this collaboration, if you reach me, I will be more than to actually foster the dialogue with the right people in the IAU side. And that's it for me. Thank you. So Lucia, Urban, and Susan, thank you very much. So wonderful presentation. So um, we went we had officers meeting in Tokyo uh, last February. Um, we, visit, yeah, we visited OAO in Mitaka, Tokyo, 
and they had a, a meeting with Dr. Watanabe, Rina Kansas, and Hideagata, so on. So we had a wonderful and very effective meeting uh, there. We could make sure a good relationship and friendship. So I'm very honored to uh, work with IAU and we will work together more on the, uh, worldwide. So, and, so thank you for many comments and uh, Urban put some good information, many information on chat, free check up. So, and some um, questions and comments. Yeah, from um, party is logo is very important and effective. Yeah, and it, it I, so I like that. Um, African so logo. Yeah, the logo. The, yeah, we actually, logo is sorry, very sorry. Yeah, yeah. The the APA. I'm I'm also in the executive board of the APA, so I, I can talk about a little logo a bit. Uh, talking about the interdisciplinary aspect of the dome, we actually thought to include all the different aspects of the earth and the sky, so mm -hmm. that we can actually vehiculate that message that the dome can do mm -hmm. much more. And just showing the sky and that was actually encapsulated in in the logo that's why you know, we try to do that a very specific and different logo if you want in uh, and this is you know susan and chu i think they they were their design originally so well done we love it mm -hmm. <laughs> so. so we love the logo and yeah So and everybody likes loves um, bamboo dome. I can see that Mark said that I can be, but I think you were already convinced, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, we have been rolling our been, collaboration. <laughs> we have been individually talking with each of the offices, mm -hmm. so both OAE, um, which you know is is located at a facility with a planetarium, um, um, OAD as well, um, and um, mm -hmm. and of course OAO, who, who OAO also has a planetarium there. So there are a lot of natural connections. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I suggest that if you want to broaden and actually what you need to do is actually to talk directly to the president and general secretary and engage them because what I did as well, I mean, you did as well. I mean, we all did <laughs> talk to these people, but also to prompt the idea that, you know, if we want to present this collaboration, this broaden collaboration, we need to talk to the division leader and suggest a focus session in each every session in the next GA in which we can present the benefit of, of the dome in that context so but you know to talk to the right people to the right focus meeting um so that that would be the plan if covid allows us to see each other again 